All right, everybody, we're back for game two. In the first game, we saw Carl pretty much dominate Mike. He just got set up very quickly, and when he does that, it's going to be tough for Mike's Don fans and Tornadus to really combat that. So, right here we have game two. We're going to have Mike hopefully choosing to start first. If he allowed Carl to go set or allowed Carl to go first, that would be the biggest misplay of all time. So, all right, he will go first. Since he did lose the first game, he gets to choose who goes first. And he's going to choose who to go first, obviously. Um, so he does start with a Zerua, probably not the favorite starter. But he does get two fan fees down, and he's just going to pass. And now we do see Carl start with a Horsey. Played a Communication. Didn't see what he shuffled in, but I'm going to assume it was a Bellsprout, because I saw that in his hand. And there's no reason you really want Bellsprout in your hand. Um, against this deck. Bellsprout, of course, is a tech for any trainer lock decks like Gothitelle or uh, The Truth. And you just don't use it in matchups where people can actually play trainers like Switch because then you've done nothing. So, right now we're going to see Carl communication for a Cleffa. And he's going to catch her out the second Fampy. Now, this is kind of a danger for Mike. He benched two Fampies. Um, it does have a two retreat cost, so, and we uh, we do see a sage out of Carl. He gets three Cyndaquils. Should probably bench all three of those, to be honest. Not sure why he wouldn't bench a third one. Uh, you, once you have that Cleffa in play, you don't need three. Um, you don't need multiple Rush Rams in play, so you can send up Cleffa as the free retreater and keep retreating. Oh, actually, I'm mistaken. There was only two Cyndaquils, so he is going to retreat and eek. I don't know why I thought he had three, but yeah, he does bench both Cyndaquils. Uh, but anyway, some common mistake I do see people make is that they don't bench enough Cyndaquils, something gets catchered, and then you just don't have enough Typhlosions in play. But here we do see Mike get a strong start. Uh, one of the worries I had is that he played two Fampies down and that uh, maybe one of them could get stuck up there because there's a two retreat cost, but he had another down fan. I actually had two down fans in his hand. And um, a catcher for a Cyndaquil, and he's going to have an Earthquake. And this is kind of the problem I was saying. When you can only have two Cyndaquils in play at once, one of them can get catchered, and then you're kind of limited to how many Typhlosions you get in play, because every time you bench a new Cyndaquil, that's just going to get catchered. And eventually you're going to be down to just one Typhlosion in play. And when you only have one Typhlosion in play, uh, the deck actually becomes very weak. You don't have enough energy acceleration to really keep using Reshiram the entire game. And eventually that Typhlosion might get knocked out too. And then just down to a whole lot of nothing. So we'll have to see if Carl can rebound from this. He does have a communication fairly quickly. And it looks like he's going for the Kingdra Prime. Now this is an interesting choice. He must have a rare candy in his hand, which means uh, he's opting to get the Kingdra instead of the Typhlosion. Not sure how I really feel about that, but that is what he decided to go for. He's going to go for another Collector here. I'll uh, get two more Cyndaquils and then a Rush Ram. Now this is the right thing. You need to bench as many Cyndaquils as possible here. Um, try to make sure you can get two Typhlosions out. Because if you don't, you're going to have some trouble. Now I do, not, I do not believe Carl plays any way to attack with the Kingdra Prime. Um, it's just going to be for Spray Splash in order to set up Mike's Don fans for knockouts. Now we will see another Eek. He does have all three Cyndaquils down, so things are going according to plan for Carl. We'll see if Mike can keep the pressure on uh, from his side. So we do have a Charon for three. And I did see another Catcher there, so that is a big deal. Now where is he going to go from here? Um... One of the tempting things Mike could do is uh, he's got a communication. Now one of the traps he could fall into is to grab Zorark. I did see a double colorless in his hand. And uh, if he grabs Zorark and puts a double colorless on it, I feel like this is the wrong thing to do because you've already seen a bunch of them. Uh, catcher does exist. And if Carl were to get a uh, Typhlosion and then a Catcher onto the Zorark and Blue Flare the Zorark, and Mike's really got nothing to deal with Reshram. There's just not a whole lot. 
And uh, Zorark is his really uh, only option to knock out any sort of Rush Rams in one hit. So, uh, you, you only need two energy to attack with the Zorark. So, you really want to hold on to the Double Colorless and just wait until you attack in order to uh, attach with it. If you attach early like this, you run the risk of just straight up losing your Double Colorless and your Zorark. So there's no need to attach it before you attack. We're going to see if uh, it comes back to bite him, but... I don't know. Um, that's something I worry about a lot. I would rather have him bench a Tornadus and put a Double Colorless on that, because that's something you need to set up in advance. You need to use two energy attachments to set up a Tornadus. Whereas the Zorark only takes one energy, and then you can uh, foul play with just a Double Colorless. So, not sure if that's going to come back to haunt him at all, but... Alright, we're seeing um, a bunch of communications out of Carl. He now has two Quilavas in play, so one of the unfortunate things about Mike's last turn is that he did not get a second energy to put onto his down fan. So unless he gets a catcher and then... Alright, so he's going to play it on a fan piece. So unless he gets a catcher and two plus powers, there's no way for him to knock out a Quilava. Now, one of the other things that putting down Tornadus last turn would have uh, allowed him to do is um, catch her out Quilava, and then get a switch, and then put an energy onto Tornadus, and then get a knockout on Quilava. Now, if Mike can knock out one of these Quilavas, he will be in a superb position to take this game. He's already ahead by two prizes, and if he can eliminate a third Cyndaquil from the game, this will be huge. So, he's going to Oak's New Theory for six. And he's going to need a catcher and a plus power in order to knock out one of those Quilavas. If he does this, I am pretty sure he'll win the game because he'll be up by three prizes. And those will all be Cyndaquils. The first card is a Junk Arm. Does he get the other card he needs? And it looks like no, he doesn't get it. So now he's got a decision to make. Do I want to use a catcher this turn? Uh, even though I'm not really going to knock anything out? Or... Do I hold it and save it for a later time, maybe? So he is going to Junk Arm, discarding a Collector and a Zekrom. He's going to go for a Catcher, and I would assume this is for a Quilava, and yes it is. Now he could have done that or gone for a Reshiram. He decides to go for the Quilava, which is probably the right thing to do. And now we're going to see if Carl has the cards to pull off a Blue Flare this turn. So right away, Carl evolves a Typhlosion, and uh, right off the bat, it's actually the wrong order to do things. He has a fire in his hand, he just could have retreated, paid the one retreat cost for Quilava, and then uh, retreated to Reshram and then evolved. But now this way he's got to pay the two retreat cost for Typhlosion. Uh, just kind of did things out of order. It's actually a very big deal, something you got to pay attention to. Uh, he's basically paying an extra retreat cost for no reason. And that can actually come back to really ruin you. Um, so we do see a Junk Arm, I believe, for communication, and we have another Typhlosion, so scary turn for Mike. Even though he's up two prizes, now Carl has this complete setup. The Kingdra, two Typhlosions, two Rush Rams, um, and there's not really any free prizes for Mike to take on his field. Now, if that Zorark does live, he can knock out Rush Ram for sure. Um, otherwise, alright, so we're going to see Carl use two afterburners to retreat his Typhlosion, and then attach to Reshiram. Going to see what he does from there. Uh, so, I guess one of the things that uh, not attaching to the Quilava to retreat did was, now his uh, Reshiram is clean of all damage, but it's not really relevant when he knocked out the Zorark. <laughs> so, this is what I was worried about with Mike before. He committed all of that stuff onto his um, onto his Zorark. He just basically lost a double colorless energy for no reason, and those are very precious resources. You only run four in a deck, so it's tough to see that go down. And right uh, right now, <laughs> Mike's got the one prize advantage. He's got the damage on that Typhlosion on the bench, but honestly. He doesn't have much else. I didn't really see any supporters in his hand. I didn't really see 
any catchers, which would be the big deal here. He would want to target down that Typhlosion this turn if he could. Um, basically, all he can do is Hurricane this turn, and that's not a way he's going to win the game. He's going to two-hit this Rush Ram. First one with Hurricane, the next one's going to be with a Don Fan. But from there, oof, you can't trade two for one like this. And that's basically what you're doing because that Kingdra's in play. Now he does have two free catcher prizes on the bench. He does have that Typhlosion, the one with 90 damage on it, and the Cleffa, which is a free knockout for anything that can basically blow and uh, knock it over <laughs> with a slight breeze. And um, yeah, as we can see, all right, so we have a Poke Gear from, from Mike. This could be big if he hits a supporter that's gonna change everything. And he does hit a Juniper, wow, uh, that's exactly what he wanted. He didn't really have much in his hand. So right now it's tied 4-4. Four to four. We, bet we have a bunch of down fans all with 10 damage on them. Now this is a big deal because Kingdra Spray Splash puts 10 more damage on them and then Blue Flare can knock out the down fan. And basically, when you're playing down fan you're just um, kind of assuming that he'll be able to take a hit. And in this case, you really can't. He uh, is going to be knocked out in one hit. You really rely on Don Fan's bulkiness to knock things out in two hits. That way you just kind of trade blows. Um, but in this case, Don Fan's not trading anything. He's just getting knocked out. And right now we do see Mike drew some pretty good stuff. He's got a catcher, a junk arm, and a whole bunch of stuff. So he's going to junk arm, or actually catcher for that Typhlosion. And I think if he can play this out correctly, we could see Mike win the game. He's got uh, three prizes left at this point. He has, let's see, a Cleffa, free to knock out. He has a Rush Ram, free to knock out as well. And then he's just going to have to take one more prize. So it's going to be tough to get that very last prize, but he's got the Junk Arms in his hand. He's got um, enough catchers to really get down to one prize now the question is can he score that crucial last knockout now this rush ram does have 20 damage on it already and this is not what i wanted to see out of mike um this turn i would have loved to see him junk arm for a catcher and we're gonna see another pokey gear let's see what he gets looks like collector is the only thing there there are two plus powers left in his deck so he's got a lot of stuff left now, what I want to see him do this turn is promote the Don Fan with one energy. This way he can simply catch her for another Rush Ram, get a knockout, and basically he's trying to get Carl to use Afterburner to um, put it up to enough damage. You know, right now, Rush Ram has 110 hit points left. Don Fan does 90 with Heavy Impact. So he's going to want to try to get it in range for... Um, Maybe a simple plus power knockout. That's going to be the way you're going to knock these things out. Um, it really comes down to how many junk arms and catchers Mike has left. So, I think in order for him to win the game, he's going to need to get a catcher on the Cleffa, catcher on the damage rest ram on the bench, and then one final big knockout with two plus powers and a heavy impact from Don Fan. Scoring himself uh, a big knockout with heavy impact and that'll close the game up. So it's really crucial at this point to realize the situation you're in. Realize you're racing to six prizes. And um, right now you're tied. You have the advantage of being able to catch her first. And uh, he makes a crucial mistake. He goes for the Typhlosion. And he's actually wasting all of his junk arms. I'm not sure what Mike's doing here. Um, oof. It's kind of what he didn't want to do. Uh, he's kind of blowing all of his resources here. He did go for the potion to make sure that Carl could not knock him out in one hit. But I really don't like this. Um, he's going after that Typhlosion, but Carl does play Switch. Even if he didn't, a simple attach, an afterburner to retreat, and then a um, catcher would be able to really uh, drag out either Tornadus and uh, Outrage for a knockout, and then Carl would take the prize lead, and then you really haven't gotten yourself anyway, so that was a big wasted turn for Mike. He did not recognize the situation that 
He just needed to take prizes. Sometimes you need to go for Typhlosion, definitely. Earlier in the game, this would have been a perfectly fine play. But at this point in the game, he needs to just take prizes. He needs to catch her. He needs to get cheap prizes. And he just isn't doing it. Uh, it's going to give Carl a big window of opportunity. Uh, depending on what happens here, of course. So we're going to see a uh, retreat be attached in the afterburner. Rush Ram comes up. And does Carl have any way to catch her? And no. Wow. So a big opportunity from Carl missed as well. And Mike's uh, opportunity is swung back around, I guess. Um, so both players have missed opportunities there. I really think Mike should have gone for the catcher knockout. And then this turn he would have gotten a catcher knockout as well. And then he just would have had to get that final, final prize to win the game. But it's not looking like that. Um, he's going to have to figure out something. Uh, he played a bunch of junk arms last turn, which is really not helping him right now. He played two junk arms, I think. Uh, at least he had two in his hand, and now he has none. And he's just going to have to have the impact for the knockout. So I don't know how many catchers he actually has left. If he had two, this game would be over. Clef has a free prize, as I've been saying the whole game. That Typhlosion on the bench has now become a free prize because it's got 100 damage on it. And that's just going to be it. Um, if he can knock out two Pokemon, he wins the game. But if he can't, he's basically got two turns to win the game because Carl, he's going to be able to knock out things with Blue Flare. That's just the reality of it. He has Typhlosion, Reshiram, boom. He's going to knock stuff out. Now, if Mike did hit a catcher this turn, the game would probably be over, to be honest. Um, he just has to catch her out Typhlosion, and then Carl is out of energy acceleration. And I don't see a way for him to really win. Um, so right here is the big turn. Does Mike get the catcher? He's got a Juniper or an Oak's New Theory. And this situation, you certainly need the catcher. You just go for it. Go for the Juniper. Um, he's going to count how many cards he has left in his deck. It looks like nine, so plenty of time to win the game if you do Juniper. There we go. He's going to draw seven. Does he get the catcher? He needs to knock out the Typhlosion this turn. If he doesn't, he's in trouble. And no, it doesn't look like it. So this is what I was talking about before. Um, if Mike would have promoted the other Don fan with the one energy on it and just kept earthquaking, then he would have that Don fan with the two energy on it and be able to heavy impact. And he has those two plus powers in his hand. You can see there's a catcher in the deck. He has those two plus powers in his hand. He could have used heavy impact to uh, hit that rush rim for 110. He would have been down to one prize. And then the game really would have been over. Uh, there's still that catcher left in his deck. I think he has a supporter in his hand to go get it. And a uh, big missed opportunity from Mike. He really had control of this game and it just slowly slipped away. He gave Carl too much time to stabilize. And at this point, I don't see a real way for him to win. His only way out is going to be to um, double plus power and hurricane for 100, putting Carl at 120 damage, and then hope he doesn't have a fire energy to use Outrage, because Afterburner would uh, knock himself out, and yeah, there's a fire off the top, so <laughs> uh, what do you know, Carl did have a Juniper in his hand and some other stuff, so looks like this one's gonna go in the books for Carl, um, he's gonna be able to Outrage for a whopping 140 damage on this Tornadus. We're just getting some afterburner damage onto Reshiram. And if I'm seeing this correctly, I think this is going to be a win for Carl. I don't know if Mike can bust out any crazy stuff. We did see his deck and there's not much left. But it's not looking good. Um, he had plenty of opportunities to seal this game out. He was two prizes ahead. He knocked out two Cyndaquils actually. And that was a very big deal. But, um, that's going to be it. Oh, nope, Carl drew one too many cards. <laughs> um, at this point it shouldn't really matter, but hopefully that's not a prize penalty, because that would impact the game completely. 
and really turn a win for Carl into a loss. So hopefully they don't do that to him. But if there's nothing that changes here, Carl should just be able to take two prizes in a row and win the game. So there we go. There's an outrage. There was no penalty assessed, probably a warning or something like that. And Mike can see the grim fate in front of him. All those wasted junk arms before coming back to haunt him. He's basically caught in a situation where if he doesn't earthquake the active, um, Outrage will knock him out in one hit. If he does, the next rush ram comes up and knocks him out. So there's no way for him to avoid Carl taking a prize. And at this point, if you're Carl, you're probably jumping for joy in your seat thinking I win I win right did I win <laughs> is it over yet uh, and yeah Mike's just kind of thinking I lost how did I lose this game and maybe he can go back and watch to see where he went wrong he definitely didn't draw everything at the correct time but he did have opportunities to win the game but we're gonna see Carl take this one I think this, these last few turns are just a formality Mike's just going to take a look and see, is there any way I can really do anything? And he's probably going to be crushed to find out that the answer is no. Uh, unless he plays a couple crushing hammers and discards all the energy off of Carl's <laughs> benched Reshiram. I don't see a way out. Um, ironically, that would win him the game. But it's not looking like it's going to happen here. And... Just gonna go ahead and earthquake. I think there's nothing he can really do, and I think he's come to that realization. He actually plays a catcher and brings out Typhlosion and gets a knockout, which is the easiest way to lose. And yet, Carl can just outrage or get the energy to Blue Flare, and that's gonna be the game, ladies and gentlemen. Your Indiana Fall Regional Champion is Carl Shu on the right with Typhlosion, Reshram, Kingdra. The Kingdra came in, uh, came in handy. It was a big turning point in the match every time he could get that out. It really uh, made Don Fan a lot less useful. And there you have it. That's just the game. <laughs> um, congratulations to both players for doing so well, getting so far. And congratulations to Carl for winning the event. Hope you guys enjoyed our coverage of Indiana Fall Regionals. We will be back for city championships, and we'll be covering as many events as possible throughout the year. So, thank you for watching and supporting us. We appreciate everything, and give us some feedback to know what we can do better. And just keep playing Pokemon, because it's the greatest game of the world, and we love it. So, take care guys, and I'll see you next time.